me again, Teacher May, and today we will learn about the changes in matter. We will know in this lesson about the impact of change, their kinds, and their effects of changes in matter. Let's begin. Changes occur in matter. Did you notice the changes that you experienced as you grew older? Did you notice the changes in your body size, weight, and height? Do you agree that these are among some changes in you as matter? Moving on, change has so much impact in people's lives. For instance, because of change, work has become easier and more comfortable for people. When in the past, work was done mostly by hand or manually, changes in the way work is done with the aid of modern tools and equipment have made a lot of tasks easier and faster to do. Some machines assist people with these tasks. Other machines and tools have helped to increase the productivity of people who are able to come up with more output within a shorter period of time. Change has also led to development in technology, which in return has contributed much to advances in many fields of science such as medicine. Change has been possible because matter can go through changes. There are two kinds of changes in matter, the physical change and chemical change. Physical change or change that occurs in the size shape or state of matter without forming a new substance. If you were to pound on a piece of chalk or tear up a piece of paper, that you produce still have the properties of the original pieces of chalk and paper. Matter may undergo physical change through different processes. For instance, the addition or removal of heat energy can cause matter to change from one state to another. Example, when you boil water, you will notice that the water produces steam as the liquid molecules of the water turn to gas molecules in a process called evaporation. As they cool, the gas molecules become liquid molecules in a process called condensation. The application of heat energy can also cause physical changes in solids, like for example, if you place ice cubes, which are solids, under the heat of the sun, they will turn to liquid water after a few minutes in a process called fusion or melting. When you place the liquid water in a freezer, the water will turn into ice or solid water in a process called freezing or solidification. Changes of solids into gases also occur around us. Naphthalene ball is the best example of this change. These are small balls of white substances that are used to ward of insects like cockroaches because of their very strong smell. If you leave naphthalene balls in an area for more than one hour, the balls will emit a very strong aroma into the air. You will not see the change in the solid balls to a gas, but indeed it happens. This direct change from solid to gas takes place in a process called sublimation. The solid to gas change can also occur in the opposite direction. The frost in a freezer is actually the result of the sublimation of the ice. In this case, the water vapor of the sublimated ice 
forms the frost without passing the liquid state. This process of changing gas directly to solid is called deposition. Let's see. So if the flame receives less oxygen, we can make a solid called carbon. We're going to make less oxygen using a plate on top of the flame. As soon, as soon as we've got the plate, we need to place the plate into the flame, which will, which will create a black soot. As you can see, it has made a, a very dark soot, and that is actually a solid. And if you want, you can lick your finger and wipe the carbon off. Always remember that the process of solid to liquid is called melting or fusion. Liquid to solid is called freezing or solidification. Liquid to gas is called condensation. Gas to liquid is called evaporation. Solid to gas is called sublimation. And gas to solid is called deposition. These are the process of physical change. Now, let's proceed to the process of chemical change. Look at the burning logs in the photograph. What is coming up from them and from the fire? What are the grayish white substances that have formed on the lungs? What do you think caused this? The mist coming up from the logs and fire is smoke, while the grayish white substances are ashes. Both the smoke and ashes are products of a chemical change that has occurred in the logs. When matter undergoes a chemical change, its chemical composition is altered, causing the original substance to be replaced by one or more new substances. In the given example, when heat is applied to the logs, the components of the wood react with the oxygen in the air. Thus, forming the smoke and ashes, you will observe that you can no longer recognize the wood from the smoke and ashes. Now, how does change affect people? Though some changes bring development, there are changes that make the life of people easier while others destroy the environment and even affect the health of people. The change in the technology of television sets in the past five years only has seen how these sets have evolved from the bulky and heavy unit to the flat screen and light units of today. The cellular phone that could hardly fit in your pocket two years ago now lies snugly on your palm. Technological developments are a welcome boost to people's lives. They have definitely made work easier and faster and communication so much more convenient. However, they come with their own problems and disadvantages. An example would be the invention of machines like air conditioners. It has some negative effects on both people and the environment. The air circulation an air conditioner creates can easily transmit airborne diseases that could be a big threat to the health of those confined in an air-conditioned room. Changes in matter may increase the production of food supply and other materials. In the water cycle, water and earth evaporates then undergoes condensation to produce rain, snow, and other forms of precipitation, which later fall back to earth. The rain that falls on earth is vital to all living things. Plants use water from the rain to produce their food and provide food for other organisms, while people and other animals use it to replenish their bodies. Plants are sources of materials for various things that people need, such as paper and furniture. However, 
because of pollution in the air, even the rain can be harmful to living things. This is due to a phenomenon known as acid rain, or rain that consists of water droplets that have become acidic due to pollution. Acid rain that falls on plants and the soil removes important minerals from the soil and from the leaves of plants. Acid rain that falls on bodies of water causes the death of fishes and other marine life. People also feel the effects of acid rain when the water that they drink has been contaminated by it. These are all about the changes in matter. And that will end our lesson for today. I hope you learned something and keep on learning. Have a good day!